This is my third video in my module on geometric sequences in which we're going to practice how to write the rule for the nth term of a sequence, but when you neither know the first term nor the common ratio. So again, recall uh, that any geometric sequence would be a sequence, you know, for example, like this one here, this would be a geometric sequence. And the reason why is because there exists what we call a common ratio from number to number in the sequence, or at least a, uh, a common multiple that we're constantly taking the last term times to get to the next term. And we can always find this common ratio, we use the letter R to represent, by taking a term, so for example 12, and dividing the number right before it. So 12 divided by 6. It'd be the same thing as 6 divided by 3 there if you did the terms before, 6 divided by 3. You get 2, so we have a common ratio of 2. Uh, that would be what we mean by a geometric sequence. Recall that with geometric sequences, the rule for the nth term of the sequence is a n. To get the nth term, you always need the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1th power. So this is our rule to find the nth term. What I want to do is uh, <clears throat> find the rule for the nth term, but only if I've been given two data points in my geometric sequence. So I know the second term and the fifth term, but I don't know the first term and the common ratio, which are the two things I need to write this rule. Let's go ahead and at least plug in what we know. So what I mean is this. This is some a sub n here. So in other words, we can take a sub 2, uh, which is 45, we could plug that 45 in right here for a sub n. We say that would be 45 if n is equal to 2, so we could put a 45 in for this and a 2 in for this and actually start working backwards. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by plugging in our first data point. So we'd say uh, a sub n, this is a sub n here, it's 45 equals a sub 1, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, so we get times r and then this is to the n minus 1 now. When we plugged in a 45, this was a sub 2. So we get 2 minus 1. So in other words, we get this equation here. 45 equals a1 times r to the 1. We're going to put this in our back pocket. So that's after plugging in this first data point here. Let's plug in our next data point, which is a5. So we get this. We'd say a5, which is negative 12, 15. I'm putting that in for right here on our equation. Gets a1 equals a1 times r to the n minus 1, where now n is 5. So we say 5 minus 1. So we end up simplifying down into this. Negative 12, 15 equals a1 times r to the 4. We're going to keep this in our back pockets as well. Thing is, I want to find out what a1 and r are, but we're going to do it using the substitution method. So we say substitution method. And remember, substitution method said this. Let's pick a variable, either a1 or r, or a1 or r to the fourth to get by itself and plug into the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for a1 here. Okay. So what this means is I'm going to take this 45 equals a1 times r and I'm going to divide both sides by r. Oops, that looks better. Divide by r so that these r's cancel out. And I'm left with this a1 equals 45 over r. So now that I know a1, what we could do is we could go plug it in up here in this equation for this you know, value. And so we get this negative 12, 15 equals this, a1 times r to the fourth. Then I get 45 over r. So one thing I do want to bring up is this. We get negative 12, 15 equals 45 r to the fourth over r, but this r cancels out with one of these r on top and leaves behind an r cubed. So when it all comes down as said and done, we say negative 12, 15, let me try this again here, negative 12, 15 equals 45 r cubed. So now we need to solve for r, which means we're going to divide both sides of this by 45, so 45, so this cancels out and we're left behind with this. Uh, let's see, 12, 15, 12, 15 divided by 45 is 27, so we get negative 27 on the left, and this equals r cubed, and to undo the cubed, we'll do a cube root. So we say the cube root of r cubed is just r. The cube root of a negative 27 is a negative 3, so now we know r. In order to find out what a1 would be, our suggestion since the dawn of time when solving systems is this, let's plug it back into the equation where we've already solved for a1. So we get this then, we say a1 which was equal to 45 over r is now a1 is equal to 45 divided by negative 3 which comes out to be negative 15. So now here's what we know. We know a1 and we know r so we can write the rule. Well, let's put this in a different color so we can distinguish it from everybody else up here. We say how about green? So we say our rule for this top thing up here where we had an r value of 
uh, negative 3 and an a1 value of negative 15. Those are what we just found. We say a sub n equals a1 was negative 15 times r, sorry, why am I drawing a blank here, negative 3 to the n minus 1. And then this would be our rule. Let's try this again. Uh, we'll give two terms of a geometric sequence. We'll solve this using substitution method again. So a little bit quicker this time. Write the rule for the nth term. We know a2 is equal to negative 18. So here's our rule. a n equals a1, first term, times r to the n minus 1 power. So let's plug in what we know. We have negative 18 goes in for a sub n. That equals a1 times r to the, now our n here is 2. So we have 2 minus 1. So we end up with this right here. We say negative 18 equals a1 times r to the first. So here's one equation. <clears throat> now our second equation we get by plugging this in here. We say a5 is 2 thirds. So now we say 2 thirds is equal to a1 times r to the 5 minus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So we get this. 2 thirds equals a1 times r to the fourth. Here are both of our equations. So again, solving this with substitution method, let's get this by itself in the first equation. So this means we'll take this negative 18 that is equal to a1 times r. To get a1 by itself, we'll divide both sides by r. And so this will cancel out my r's over here. So we get this one. a1 equals negative 18 over r. So now, substitution method says we'll go plug this in down here for a1. So now we have 2 thirds equals a1 times r to the fourth. In A1, remember, we have negative 18 over R. And by the way, this R is going to cancel out with one of these R's and leave 3 behind. So we get this. 2 thirds equals negative 18 R cubed. So now we need to solve for R. This means we'll divide both sides by negative 18. So now we took 2 thirds divided by negative 18. By the way, negative 2 thirds, sorry, 2 thirds, we'll make this positive, divided by a negative 18 over 1 is the same thing as 2 thirds times its reciprocal which is 1 over negative 18. So we get this here, we get, uh, let's see, 2 and 18 cross reduce. this becomes a 1, this becomes a negative 9. And so on top we get 1 times 1 is 1, on bottom we get 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. So this right here, this is r. <coughs> Sorry, no, that's r cubed. Because what we did was we found 2 thirds divided by negative 18. So now we have this negative 1 27th is equal to r cubed. So now we'll take the cube root of both sides. Cube root. When we take the cube root of a fraction, remember you're taking the cube root of the top over the cube root of the bottom. So we get this. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 and the cube root of 27 is 3. So here's our r. So now in order to find a1, we'll substitute this back into one of the two original equations. Perhaps you know, we'll switch over to like a fuchsia here to show you. We're going to take this r we're going to plug it back into one of these original equations here. Or what we could do is we could plug it into this. Because we've already solved for a1. So we say a1 was equal to negative 18 over r. And r is negative 1 third. So again, dividing with the fraction, we get a1 here is equal to negative 18 times the reciprocal of negative 1 third, which is negative 3 over 1. And so we get this a1 is a positive 3 times 18 is 54. So now we have a1 and r, we'll write the rule. We say a sub n equals my a1, which is 54, times r, which is negative 1 third, to the n minus 1. So a little bit more complex to write the rule when you're given two data points, but you know it requires you to remember a lot of your algebra from the past.